What's going on, guys? Uh, welcome to another live session. Okay. Let's see who's in line there. Hmm. What's going on? Hello. There's 25 of you online. Hit the thumb up. Hey, Western Goddess. What's going on, my sister? Good day to you. Bonsoir de Paris. Oh, Paris, mm, Eunice. There are two Eunice online. Simeon Oladipo, David Osilaja. What's going on, people? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, people? How's your day been and how are you doing? Um, hello, Franklin. Please, how do we contact you? Look in the description of this uh, video. You see my email address, please. Food channel. 1960 at gmail.com. Send me an email and I'll pick up your email after the live session, okay? After the live session. Akinyele Jones. Hey, from Saudi Arabia. Wow. Tululokbe. We are everywhere, man. I found out something crazy that Africans from the restaurants in Africa. Yep, that's true. Amy. <laughs> People... People are still talking about my hair, man. My, is it my hair? My hair, my hair, my hair. What about it? I managed to trim this. So we look a little tidy on that side, man. Kazim, give us a thumb up. Give us a thumb up, man. Right. Anyways, first of all, I want to say thank you to everyone that watched, you know, the uh, my upload yesterday. When I talked about, you know, we need to act now, do something about Africa, you know, thank you to everyone that's watched it. If you're on the timeline, you've not watched that video yet, go and watch my upload from yesterday. Go and check out that video and be sure to share the video, okay? Share the video, please, all right? Yeah. Texas is reopening the economy next week. Wow. Why don't you let Victoria give you a haircut? <laughs> I'm not sure about that. <laughs> Thank you, Amy. Thank you. So. There has been, you know, quite a lot of... Uh, there's been quite a lot of, um, you know, um, backlash. As I said in the, my upload yesterday, you know, when people say stuff, a lot of censoring going on, you know, but we wouldn't be faced, you know, we wouldn't be silenced. We're just basically, we're asking for fairness. We're asking for civil liberties to be respected and they will be respected. They must be respected. So that's why we're, campaigning it's not um it's not really you know that we we're not toxic people we're not bad people we're not out to get anyone but when you have people putting on due pressure on your life on your existence you'll have to push back i think it's only natural if you can hear me if you can see me hit the like button all right if you want to support the channel you can look in the description below. You can support the channel via PayPal, Patreon account, or there is a button on there on the live chat bit. You can do donations if you want. Can you start allowing viewers to call in? You know what? It's a good point, Superstar Sally. I, um, I'm going to start... Uh, I'm looking to start using StreamYard. 
like Wodimaya and other people use, okay? So with um, StreamYard, you can incorporate that with your YouTube account, and then that way you can have a split screen. So like I'm online, online now, I can pick any one of you, we can have live chats, and then we can have divided screen. It's the sort of thing you have on Instagram. It's just that the video is in a portrait version, whereby I can add someone to the live streaming on Instagram, and then I'm at the top, you are at the bottom, you know, or vice versa if you're the one hosting it. So I'm working towards that. I'm going to set up StreamYard so that I can, I can get you guys in and... Uh, it makes it even a lot better, a lot more interactive and stuff like that, all right? So that's duly noted. That's going to happen soon. So let's talk about this. Uh, the Chinese. In light of my, uh, my content from, um, you know, yesterday, you know, I was doing, uh, I was doing a lot more you know, a bit more research and because it's nice to, um, to, um, the, there, there are two sides to, um, social media. Okay. People like us, people like me, we do our bit to put out information, but also the people that consume information, most people are lazy. People don't bother to do research. And there's a lot of, Chinese whispers, there's a lot of misinformation. So even for someone like me, you know, it's very important that what I put out there is not misleading. I don't disseminate any malicious falsehood or any information that will misdirect, particularly my people, okay? So I was doing research as earlier in the day, I was reading quite a lot of stuff and I saw this article. It's on the Financial Times, okay? So talks about a particular Chinese gentleman. It was just, they used him as an example of, you know, the huge amount of Chinese that have moved into Africa. And again, see what I want us to take away from this discussion tonight is knowledge is power. If we, like I said, this was what prompted the video that I uploaded yesterday. The do nothing approach would turn blind eyes or you were latching onto religion or you use religious belief to suppress your minds and then you assume that the universe will just magically fall into place for you. That's one of the most dangerous things we can ever do to ourselves. The people that we are up against, the people that are taking charge of our lands, of our resources, the people that are gunning after our resources, believe me, they are not playing. A lot of the things that we are seeing in 2020 that are playing out in, in right before our eyes in the past few weeks, there's been a lot of shakeups. There's a lot of staggering information rolling out and stuff. A lot, a lot of these things have been planned from way back, from donkey years ago. This is what I'm trying to, you know, get to people. So if you're, we're up against people who are heavily, heavily resourced. A very tiny percentage of people that sit at the top of the pyramid of existence, human existence, and they basically are latching onto global control. They are already soliciting for one, you know, one world, one type of global government to solidify their positions and have a strong reign on us humans. So this is why I keep saying, if we are ever going to break away from this, if we are ever going to have that re you know revolution and stuff, we need to we need to we need to start you know regrouping and start working together, man. And the truth is, a lot of black folks are not ready. People are not ready. You turn your backs towards reality. People who want to hope some imaginary god will come and fix it. I hope it's not too late for us, man. The people, I repeat, that we are up against, they are very deep pockets. They are bottomless, you know, pockets. They have unbelievable amount of resources. They're not playing. They're not kneeling down and praying. They're not fasting and praying. They're not on the mountain. They're not, they're not fantasizing. They're not hoping. They are underground, orchestrating. They are moving. 
with brutal forces. They're not playing. And here we are, leaning back and just hoping that Mother Earth would magically flip over and magically do something. It's not going to happen, man. If we do nothing, this is why I made the video yesterday. That video, I didn't, do you know what's even funny? That video, my heart was just really heavy. I was on my bike. I dismounted. And I, and I, and I, I just switched on my mobile phone. And I just went, I just spoke to the camera. Then I listened back and I thought, you know what? I'm just going to let this go live. And the response to that video has been staggering. So many people have emailed me, said, Franklin, we align with your thought process. I mean, so many people, I, you know, clever, but really smart people watch my videos anyway, who, you know, also even have a next level of viewing and analyzing stuff because no man is an epitome of knowledge. But the do-nothing approach, fam, is scary, you know? It's scary. Yeah. I was I was actually, interestingly, I was on the bike. I was cycling. I was just going somewhere, you know, to I think get, get some fruits. And I just dismounted. My my mind's been heavy for the best part of yesterday. And I just sat down, just flipped my phone, and I just spoke. And and that was it. Right. So check this. Let's talk about tonight. Check this. So, as you probably know, right, these are ah, 127 people are watching, right? Hit the thumb up, give us the like button. Come on, man. I should, 129, I should have a thumb up from virtually everybody watching me now. Give the like button. Thank you. 41 thumbs up. Give us more, more, more. Hit the like. Yeah, more, more, more. Thank you. Thank you. And you know, ah, about the video from yesterday, right? I'm just a mere motto, like, like you watching me, right? It's not surprising. There are some black folks who have got fish brain. And I had some of these people come into my, a couple, not a lot. So many people get it. You know, these new shift in paradigm. I think people are starting to wake up. But there was the odd, you know, new sons would come into your inbox and who are you trying to change the universe? <sighs> oh, do you think you can take over the world? If you don't let Jesus give you direction, you are not going to get anywhere. Really? Do you think this is about Franklin? I mean, ah. You know what I did, right? Because I, I wasn't ready to smash my iPhone 11. So I put my phone down. I went to the kitchen. I put the kettle on. I made a nice cup of coffee. And then I was just talking to Victoria. And Victoria made me laugh. And, you know, but of, of course, I'm just a human being with I'm just a pile of bones covered in flesh. I'm passionate. I want the best for my people. Since when did that become a crime? At what point did I publicly say I'm superhuman and I'm trying, I'm trying to change the universe? That's even physically and mentally impossible for one person. I don't know who these people are. Oh. You come online with your big grammar to bamboozle black people so that they can follow your agenda. What? Black folks, man. <laughs> we have a long way to go. Believe me. I, I read some of these emails and, and I'm like, what the blood? What? So, just so you know, right? Just so you know, um, beyond the belt and you know road infrastructure projects, right across Africa, thousands of entrepreneurs from China have settled in the continent. Thousands, 
a lot of road infrastructure, a lot of civil engineering projects are controlled by the Chinese. And like I was saying earlier, before I digressed, when you start to research and see the information yourself, my brothers and sisters, if you're watching me right now, I'm not going to sit here and pretend, but it's really scary. And this is nothing. It's like they're just getting started, okay? But for what the progress that they've gained so far in the last decade is staggering. And here we are. I mean, check this though. Do you know what really worried me today? I'm going to read some things to you now, but I thought about it. Here we are on other parts of, you know, in other parts of the world looking for opportunity, fighting against rejection in a system that's clearly not designed for us. We are hoping to spend the best part of our lives to accumulate resources and stuff and better our lives and our children's lives, which isn't exactly a crime. And then behind the back door, whilst we are in the West, fighting against rejection, oppression, discrimination, racism, and the lot on a daily basis, you have these people behind, going behind the back door, going into Africa and taking over at speed faster than that of the light. Believe me, it's shocking. So it's like you leave your home, you go to other parts of the world, you're trying to make a life for yourself. In that other part of the world, you're dealing with daily crap. But where you came from has been hijacked on a daily basis. So when you do decide to return to that place, will you ever get the chance to settle back in properly? That's the question. Do you get what I'm saying? So, uh, there's a man called Wilson, Wilson Wu, right? He, he manages in, in a part of, um, in a part of um, Ogu State in Nigeria. If you're watching me, hit the thumb button. 66, 66 uh, thumb, thumb ups. Give us more, give us more. So he manages some 60 in a scruffy town in Ogu State, right? Which is uh, 60 kilometers from Lagos State. He basically has several industrial warehouses where he manages um, a business of manufacturing ceramics and several other things, right? And there are numerous Chinese businesses in that part of Nigeria alone, scattered across Nigeria. This is just an insight into Africa. I'm just talking about Nigeria now. Now, watch this. Watch this. This is what Mr. Wu said. He said... He, he visualizes, he visualizes, right? This is the Chinese man that owns that industrial estate in a good state in Nigeria. He says, we can see altogether a brighter future. We will have five-star hotels, golf clubs, the likes of Walmart scattered across. He says in a well-rehearsed pitch, he said, it will be like the new Dubai. Do you see what I'm saying? He's an electrical engineer by profession and his journey to West Africa was followed by an assignment as a young man in, uh, and then he worked for Power Construction uh, co uh, Corporation in China, a state-owned you know, uh, electricity upgrading grid, right? So in 2011, Hungry for more adventure, right? He packed his bags and headed for uh, Nigeria, where um, still barely um, 30 years old. He tapped up to manage the Auguste Free Trade Zone, a private public project in which the local government provides the land, the Chinese enterprise, the capital. 
the state government provides hectares of land and they pump in the money, the Chinese. Mr. Wu is one of hundreds of thousands of Chinese citizens. A common estimate is about one million who have ventured to Africa over the past two decades to seek fortune. Like many who have ended up there, he sees in Africa's raw energy and ambition an echo of the forces that were unleashed back in 1978. Now, here's what he said. It's like, it's like China of the 1970s and 1980s when you could open a business and maybe earn a fortune, he said. Those kind of fortunes are not possible in China today. So they spread to other parts of the world. And where do they target? They target Africa, right? So it's uh, China's massive infrastructure projects, including dams, railways, there's ongoing rail railway projects across Nigeria at the moment. The Chinese are the ones in charge. There are engineers in Nigeria, qualified engineers, that could man those projects. But I still do not understand the thought process behind second-classing our own people, second-classing our own people and giving power to these people to control our infrastructure, our resources, okay? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So watch this. Including dams, railway ports, and telecommunication net networks that capture most attention. Between 2000 and 2014, the stock of Chinese investment in, in, in Africa went from 2% of US levels to 55%. It's estimated that at the current breakneck pace, China will surpass U.S. levels within a decade. Even Washington has belatedly woken up to China's growing presence, which is transforming both the physical and diplomatic landscape of Africa. In December 2019, John Bolton, Presid uh, President Donald Trump's national security advisor, accused China of using bribes, opaque agreements, and strategic use of debt to hold states in Africa captive to Beijing's wishes and demands. It doesn't mean the U.S. themselves don't want a mega slice of Africa. It's just the fact that the Chinese are moving at an unbelievable speed, aggressively pushing and buying over our resources at staggering speed. So there was an essence. So basically, the US seem to be condemning China is absolute bollocks. They're saying that it's like, I want a slice of something, but the other guy is moving at the speed of light and it's taking over at a speed quicker than the one I can ever come up with. Do you see what I'm saying? So they are all the same. It's not because the US exactly love Africa. No, they don't. They all want Africa's resources. Now, watch this. There are currently over 10,000 Chinese companies. 10,000. 10,000 Chinese companies operating in Africa, including... 920 companies alone in Nigeria and 861 in Zambia and then across the rest of Africa. Now, currently, according to Financial Times, over 500 billion US dollars is the value of African industrial output handled by the Chinese. Who is this person with... Who is this person using, uh, wow, look at this, look at this low life. Actually going to sign up uh, a YouTube account in, in my name and say Port China. Wow. You see how low these people get? Look at someone using my name. This is not my, just so you know for the records, I've just spotted that now. 
This is not my, I have got nothing to do with that account. And um, I don't know who that person is, but I'm going to block that account now. Just give me a moment. Wow. 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 Wow, that's 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 crazy. Like <laughs> somebody basically trying to clone me. These people are so silly. Anyways, moving along. Yeah, probably a spy, you know. It's 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 one of the things you find online, man. Yeah, I blocked him. Anyway, so yeah, so watch this. 500 billion US dollars is the value of African industrial output handled by Chinese businesses. It's about 12 to 15% of the total at the moment. So 9%, they currently handle 9% of manufacturing, you know, contrib contribution to Nigerian gross domestic product you know, as far back as uh, 2017, according to the World Bank. Yet large companies such as, uh, uh, you know, f top phone companies and big state affiliated companies such as China, Bridge and Road are not the only Chinese actors reshaping the continent. They are reshaping the African continent. Are you not concerned? What officials in Washington may not fully understand is that thousands of Hard scrabble entrepreneurs like Mr. Wu involved in everything from retail and factories to farming are having just as big an impact. I Irene Yon, an associate partner, da, 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 author of a book, and says the influence is particularly strong in manufacturing. Chinese manufacturing investment in the is the best hope that Africa has to industrialize in this generation, she says. Chinese involvement in Africa is not just about state-driven efforts. A just as large, if not larger, component is these private enterprises, which are more job-intensive, localized quicker, which have a much larger economic and social impact. So, I can go on and on. There's a very long article, okay? So, I, I want to talk. I just want to give you a taste. Once this live... Uh, what uh, once this live feed is over, I'll put this link, you know, in the comment section, so you can um, basically see it. Now, for Mr. Wu, the next fifteen to twenty years will see a massive expansion to ten thousand companies, two hundred times the number today. We will have eight. This is what the Chinese man said. We will have eight different industrial sectors. He says. We will have different zones for electronics, for tiles, construction. In the future, we will have a university for research and development. Nigeria has the conditions to be a factory of the world, says Ch Chinese ambassador to Nigeria. It should become the factory of the world. If that is Nigeria's state of future for now, Mr. Wu and thousands of Chinese entrepreneurs in the country like him have to contend with the present. Look. Let me, ah, we have more trolls online. Yeah, yeah, don't worry about it. I've, I've, I've got it covered. I've got it covered, man. I've got it covered. Let them keep coming. As soon as they show up, bam. We catch them, we block them one time. Yeah. So it's, um, it's, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to see who I can make a mod, you know, uh, and um, moderators. I'll see a couple of people who are reliable and honest that I can make moderators and I can, I can get them to, you know, I mean, so you, you see exactly what we're dealing with. Um, before I carry on, give us a thumb up. If you're watching me, give us a thumb up, please. Thumb up. More thumb ups, please. More thumb ups, right? So, this is what I'm saying. When I talk about religion, black folks will come and attack me. This is why I talk about misplaced, um, misplaced priorities. 
misplaced priorities. You know, whilst we are busy latching onto the religion given unto us, we are busy defending the indefensible. There are people in our lands, in our countries that are moving aggressively, that are taking over. They are taking over aggressively, aggressively being the objective word. You've seen it yourself. I cannot make this up. Please, I ask you respectfully, do your own researches, man. Thank you, my brother, Gregory. Th thank you, thank you, thank you. Smash that like button. Yes, sir, smash that like button. Do your own researches, man. Do your own researches. Educate yourself. They are basically taking over. They are pumping billions. They're buying lands, buying lands. What did Christianity do to me? Christianity didn't do anything to me personally. It's just basically, it's a religion that was imported by the colonial master that was bitten into our forefathers. These things are well documented. If people are not prepared to go and research history, don't come and attack me, okay? I'm a logical person. A lot of you have been watching me for, for time. I bump into so many people on the streets. Look, I can't stop you, regardless of what I say. I cannot stop you from what you do when you, you know, stop watching me, what you do tomorrow morning or the next minute. I've got no control over your personal life. But for me, enough is enough. I was born into Christianity. I grew up in church, man. It's all lies. It's all lies. It's just all lies. It's designed to oppress, to chain the mind. And even as Africans, as a collective, when we come here, we import the religion that was brought to us. We bring it back here to the West, in Africa. You see this? Look at the Chinese are moving aggressively. They're taking over our resources. They're controlling billions, over $500 billion in Africa's industrial output. We are busy scrambling, building churches in every nooks and crannies of our streets further chaining our minds right religious battles and rejections and tribalism amongst ourselves whilst the foreigners are buying and taking over our lands think about it but you know what you would rather fight frankly oh for the book of matthew chapter 3 verse 4 says who is matthew have you ever met that Matthew? Who is Matthew? Who? Who is Matthew? Sorry. The book of Romans. Sorry. Who are the Romans? The Thess Thessalonians. Who are they? Oh, yeah, because they were mentioned in the Bible. Who gave you the Bible? The same people that are destroying the earth that we are right now, the same people that have Africa on the dining table and destroying us. The black man would do anything, oh, religion, to die. It's mental conditioning. Go to your church and go and give your tithe. Go and do whatever the flow to your boat. I can respect it. But when it comes to talking, the past few days, the past few weeks has been very challenging. There's been a rude awakening. There's a reason why our voices are being suppressed from left, right, we're being attacked. It's not a joke. It's not a joke. It's not a joke. What is it? This is what I was saying in my video yesterday. What is it that black people own? We own nothing. We own nothing. You see, we own nothing. Look at Africa. This is why I was saying yesterday that I hope we don't end up becoming tenants in our own land, in our own space. You think it's a joke? <clears throat> Bro, people are talking about Aliko Dangote is a billionaire though. Dangote has no powers, man. Forget that, man. Dangote is a puppet. What's Dangote? Dangote, Dangote cannot, look, Dangote cannot single-handedly take on the Chinese. No way. Who is Dangote? Dangote is just one African man who's got billions. 
oh, he's building some whatever. No, nah, man. We own nothing. When you go to Nigeria, for example, you see the Chinaman in their very, very simple Dockers chinos and their and their t-shirts. You see the police officers holding umbrellas for them. You see them walking like there are nobodies. They are calling the shots. And they are moving. They are moving mad. They are moving dangerously. Believe me, man, they are ring fencing Africa. They are ring fencing Africa. They are ring fencing. They are moving aggressively, man. Nobody, black folks, have no global allies. We are the only race, we are the most hated, despised race. Sometimes I ask myself, why? What did we ever do? My crime is because I'm black, I'm melanated, I'm a black man. Why are we so despised? Why are we so hated? Look at the level of resentment. And then we are too busy fighting amongst ourselves. Nigerians are hating on Ghanaians. Ghanaians are hating on Nigerians. Uh, Zimbabweans are hating on South Africans are busy being xenophobic. You're, you're wasting your own time, man. Whilst we are busy tearing ourselves down, I can't even have a 500 pounds worth of a business deal with my own black brothers and sisters without dishonesty and greed destroying the whole thing, pointless display of ego. The Chinese, they amalgamate their forces. It's the same thing in England. It's the same thing in the US. The Jewish community, they are like this. They put their brains together. They buy resources. They buy everything. They buy everything. They buy everything. Honestly, man. How can we reverse this as a collective? People are saying, how can we... Look, we've got to start from somewhere. We've just got to start from... The togetherness is just got to start. Do you know what's funny? The oppressors know this. Black people, black people are not united. I don't care what part of the world you are. Here in the UK, US, Jap black folks. I want to let, I want to show the black guy next door that my Range Rover you know, I'm driving a Range Rover, I'm driving a BMW, I'm better than you, man. Don't don't move close. Who are you? You know, we're never like this. We don't celebrate ourselves. We pretend a lot. Pointless competition. I'm earning hundred thousand pounds a year. I want you to know that my children are better than you. I'm we're too busy. I'm flexing on you with my Gucci's, my Pradas, my Ferragamos, my Amani's. The Chinese man, the other races, they are building, they are amalgamating their brains. The Asians, the Pakistanis and stuff, they are building. Black, the, the black man, I, I want to I wanna pull up in my Amani's and Prada. I want to I wanna flex on you, you know. I want to let you know that I'm on 500 pounds a day. I, you know, I want to talk down on you, man. Oh, I'm better than you. Do you know, do you know, do you know what's funny? Amongst ourselves, people that live in England, they know this. They know what I'm talking about. Amongst black people, if you live in Kent, it's like a status quo type bull crap. Oh, we live, we live in Kent. Oh, you live in Southeast London. Oh, <laughs> oh I, li I live in Essex. Oh, <laughs> my children go to private school. <laughs> Oh, my, my husband works for investment. <laughs> so what? Oh, I'm driving a Range Rover 2019 plate. 
We're too busy. Oh yeah, my children go to ne 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 ne. Oh, I, I, and there is there is this there is this one there is this one that makes me laugh. I'm sure you've heard this before, right? You hear black people say, "Oh, my children go to these um private school. There's only there's only two black children in the class." Do you see? Do you see the mindset of a black person? Oh, there's only two black children in the class my, my daughter and then there's another child I, I know i know his father you know it's yeah the other children are white what so because the other children are they are they are white there are two black children in the class means the school is sophisticated means your children is get your child is getting that quality ed Oh my, my yeah, yeah, my, my my son and my daughter and the Williams, uh, they're going for swimming on Saturday, you know, in Kent. Oh, oh, I, I live in Grace in Essex. Oh, I live in uh, <laughs> I've I've lived abroad for donkey years. I, I see this all the time and I laugh. And you dare to tell your black brother and your black sister. They tell you that you're jealous. They tell you that you're a never to do well type. They tell you that, oh, you've got negative vibes in you. Like, sit your crusty black ass down, man. This is what I'm trying to say. We are too busy with this nonsense, oppressing ourselves. Can you see? And years after years after years among, let me tell you, when you talk about the Chinese community here in the UK, there are so many Chinese illegal immigrants. They can spend 10, 12, 15 years in the same Chinese takeaway and restaurants. You are never going to know when they get their papers, when they adjust their status. You just see that, hello, good morning. Hello, can I take your order? Hello, how are you? Hello, my friend. Hello, 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 hello. You're not going to know who owns the restaurant, who is working at the till. Everybody looks the same. Behind closed doors, they make master plans. That's why they're global powers. Call your own black brothers and sisters. Do you know, let me tell you something. I live here in the UK. Let's look for a commercial premises. Let's look for a property. I can use my platform. Let's come together and say, you raise... 5,000 pounds, you raise 5,000 pounds, you raise 5,000 pounds, let's put money together, let's buy properties. It would be like World War Three amongst black people. We are too busy flexing. Do you know who you're talking to? Before I came to this country, I had two master's degree from Nigeria. Are you mad? Do you know I was level 16 in Nigeria? Will you keep quiet? Sit your crusty black ass down and let's build empires. We are too busy flexing. Look at the Chinese, man. Look at the Chinese. I will tell you something. I'm, I'm talking to my own kind, right? Black brothers and sisters. We have these inferiority complex amongst ourselves. Jealousy. You're talking to your black brother and sister. You're talking to them. And then the next thing, they tell you stuff like, oh, oh, oh you're, 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 you're speaking big big grammar sorry what does that mean what do you mean you know like have you ever noticed am i the only person that, that you know that feels this you're talking to a fellow nigerian for example i'm talking to you the only reason that i can say words like oh amalgamate idoneous right i'm flag flabbergasted oh what are you insinuating it's because i learned those words from reading it's in the dictionary. You can actually sit on your laptop and learn words when you read, when you listen to documentaries, you educate yourself. It's just a bloody language. It doesn't mean you are lesser than who you are. It's like, it's like for example, if you want to, if you want to learn how to speak Spanish, you learn, you learn, you learn. Your own blah, blah, blah. Why are you using big, big words? 
Why do you feel intimidated? It's just a bloody language. We're too busy. We can't even. So look at what I'm saying. Look at everything I've been saying to you now. Look at everything that I've been saying to you right now. Look at everything that I've been talking about, man. We are too busy with nonsense. I can't even say to my brother, hey, yo, man, let's start an Airbnb business together. Let's build a website and start selling women's wigs or women's shoes or let's start a marketing business together. Let's, let's, let's put money together. Let's, let's build something. Let's own a, a shop on the high streets. Let's start selling vegetables together. Do you know what's funny? I was having a conversation with a brother, a good friend of mine who sells Nigerian suya. You might know who I'm talking about. And I remember a while back, I was rubbing minds with him, one of my favorite persons. We were talking business. And then he was telling me stuff about how black folks, we are, we are, we are at the top of the spectrum when it comes to consumption. We are known for consumption. We consume. You know, what? when I see that, that there is this thing about us, about, oh, I can't. Why is it that all these people that you see selling us the fruit and veggies, they've got stupid amount of money in their, in their back pockets. I was talking to a lot of these Pakistani people that sell you your tomatoes, your, your big bell pepper, your scotch bonnets, your, your, your oranges, and all those people you buy your onions from, right? They've got stupid money. And I mean stupid money. They are all invested in properties. And I was talking to this guy and he's he was telling me about the back end of how they get their supplies, how much money they make per week and how he takes some of his profit and how himself and some other brothers, they buy derelict properties and how they renovate them. And then across Southeast London, I was in London, Across Southeast London, amongst themselves, these boys are in their late 20s. Amongst about seven of them, they own over a dozen properties rented out. And they are still they make their money selling the food that we buy on a daily bloody basis. Now, if you take the template of that business, do you think it's impossible for us to replicate the same? amongst ourselves and strengthen ourselves strengthen our children but you know what the black people are too busy no no i want i want to do it for myself just me alone just me 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 and then we, we talk about oh these 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 asians are so they are so rich oh this this pakistanis got money how do you think they get their monies they work as a unit. Oh, these Indians. Let me tell you something. The Indians are not superhumans. The Chinese, they're not superhumans. They're not. My discussion with my, with my friend, the Suya guy, and because he was in the education line and then he started the Suya business and the brother is doing very well, right? You must have seen his video on my channel. Now, because he's in that environment where he's running this business, he even told me that he had tried to help some of our brothers, right, to come work for him. These are people that would tell you that they need a job, but they are, in fact, too bloody lazy. Oh, that I don't, I don't want people to see me. I don't, want, I, don't, I don't want people to see me that I'm selling suya, you know, that I'm working for someone selling suya. What? My G. My G. All the people selling your meat, your fish, your yam, your oranges, your onions, they've got crazy, stupid bank balances. What? All the African food that we buy in the West... Who are the people selling it? The Pakistani. Who are the who are at the top of consuming those food? Africans. That's what we do, black folks. But we want we want to we want to shake our car keys. Oh yeah, that's my that's my BMW M M Sport. 
What? These people, they drive shitty Nissan Micros. They've got crazy, stupid money. I have been there. I have been privileged. Privilege being the objective word. To see how these people move money. My jaw is on the floor. It's insane. This is how a community, this is why when you go to Birmingham, it's full of Asians. It's, oh, Birmingham is another Pakistan. People make all the snide remarks. But forget all that nonsense remarks, right? They strengthen themselves. In that community, they have their own accountants. They have their own lawyers. They have their own barristers. They have everything. The cash flows amongst themselves. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, you're watching me tonight, right? Let me tell you. If we, amongst ourselves, right? If we put money together, some of us say, oh, let's buy this property and rent it out, right? Maybe four of us. Let's save and put down deposit. Maybe this, let's, 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 let's own this grocery store together, right? We're selling everything that people want on a daily basis. Food. People, look, look at it. There is a global shutdown. They're asking us to stay indoors. All the grocery stores are opened because we have to eat on a daily basis. But you, you fellow black man, you can't even say, let's do a business of selling wristwatches on a daily basis. My brother wants to scam me before I even finish writing my business plan. Bollocks. Do you see what I'm saying? And now, I know I'm talking, I'm carrying on, I'm ranting, right? Just let that marinate. Just look at the bigger picture. Now look at the continent. I have taken the time. You see the, the nationalities, right? Oh, this guy is from Gambia. This guy is from Cameroon. I'm telling you right now, Africans... Our similarities are staggering. Oh, this guy is Nigerian. This guy is from Cameroon. This guy is from Zimbabwe. When you put everybody on the straight line, we're pretty much the same. I'm telling you right now. I see it. I see it. I see it every day. You can't, you can't stand with your... Look, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. This, look, my brothers, my sisters, you know, you are, you are, you are in the... Uh, we are in, for example, here in the UK, right? There's a lot of us in the IT industry. I'm not... Don't, please, don't, don't twist my words, okay? If you educate yourself, you go to university, you got qualifications, professional qualifications. For example, you're a project manager, you're a business analyst, you're an, you're an IT consultant, you're a Cisco engineer, uh, what, you're a programmer. My brothers and sisters, I'm not knocking you for having a good career or anything like that. But what I'm saying is a bit of comfortability, right? A bit of change in the bank account. The black man leans back and you start to flay your nostrils, start to flex. You get cocky. You get so full of yourself. You get carried away. There are so many of us at the bottom end of the spectrum. Oh, I work in the city of London. Oh, I work for a uh, department of work and pensions. You know, um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm an IT consultant. Oh, yeah, I'm a business analyst. With flex. With flex. Okay. Be proud of your job. The question is, and then what? What do you do to contribute positively to your communities? We're too goddamn selfish. It's unbelievable. And a lot of us... We are parents, we have children, and then to make matters worse, you are shouting to a sky daddy by the grace of God. By the grace, will you keep quiet? Have you enjoyed grace amongst yourselves as brothers and sisters? We are too envious of ourselves. Black people. Oh, geez. If you, if you, if you, I've seen this, I'm talking from real life experiences. Somebody, Black brother A goes to black brother B. Dude, I want to become a project manager, right? Okay, black brother B says, take this material, go read this, this material, educate yourself, do this, do this, do this, go and write this exam. When you pass this exam, you know, uh, go and apply for jobs, blah, 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 blah. 
I'm, I'm talking hypothetically. Black brother C says to black brother A, hey, yo, my bro, um, I'm also interested in, you know, becoming a project manager. Can you help me, please? Can I, can I, can I? Oh, no, 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 no. Um, oh, sorry, I haven't got, I haven't got the resources. Uh, I haven't got, wait, what? Mr. B just gave you those resources for free. So, Mr. C is asking you to help him. What stops you? Your brother puts his claws into those resources and deprives Black Brother C from making progress. You know why? Because he's about to get into the realm of earning four or five hundred pounds a day. He would rather see you get rotten at the bottom of the spectrum so that he can be a top and flex on you. This is the game, self-sabotage within the black community. All day, every day, 24-7. That's what black folks do, man. There are some in tiny numbers who are like, you know, amongst themselves, help themselves. But if you look at the bigger picture, man, we don't. Somebody saying, uh... Let's talk business. Push me an email, man, if you got wonderful ideas. I don't want scammers. Don't come to me with unscrupulous ideas. I don't want scammers. I don't do scam. If you come to me with dodgy ideas or you turn out, I'll put you on a blast. Okay? If you're for real, you're for progress, you're for forwardness. Bombard my inbox. Let's talk. Let's grow. Let's build. I'm, I'm tired. Let's, let's talk. I'm tired. We want people to be sure. Don't come to me and say, let's bless this business in the name of the Father. Get out. Let's put our brains on the drawing table. And again, there is no tribalism. There is no, oh, because you are Ghanaian. I want people with healthy mindset. Let's do something. Don't come to me with, you know, food channel 1960 at gmail.com. Look into my um, my description area. Take my email address. Don't don't look. Look at Africa, man. If we don't do something, some of you watching me have got kids. Do me a favor, man. I know you love your children. You you love your children. You love them with every single fiber, right? Tonight before this, your lovely bundle of joy. Look at them in their beds. Put your hands on them. Lock, close your eyes for a moment and picture their future. I pray we all grow old and gray. But what if, just what if you end up under the bus tomorrow? What becomes of their future? What becomes, you know, what becomes of the next generation? That's all I'm saying, man. I understand there's always unscrupulous people. Don't come here with your nonsense, you know, dodgy ideas. I'm sick and tired of, don't come here with your, stay away, man. Stay away. I've got holy water, I'll throw holy water at you, man. Don't come here if you're dodgy, man. Let's, let's put our heads together. I don't, no ego. Nobody's better than anybody. No, I don't want to know. I'm educated. I've got a degree. Put your degree on the shelf if you are not going to contribute positively, right? You don't got to do business with me. I'm just saying you might have some people that you flow with. Let's build something. Let's build together. Put your ego, your degree, your sexual orientation, whatever. Let's come together as smart people. Hey, the world is moving rapidly, man. Any... <laughs> Oh my God. I talked about the illusion of the black community because of our, because of our, um, we lie, you know, we use that word, oh, the black community, the black community, but we are really not doing anything about it. We're not. Y'all can give, prof you know, y'all can give offering to the prophet if you're feeling you're feeling the prophet's vibe tonight. Prophet Franklin, Reverend Franklin. You can support the channel. Like I said, 
I'm telling you, bro, my bro, my, my brothers, my sisters, right? I am I am not a superhuman. I'm, it's just the way I'm mentally wired. I've lived abroad for donkey years. I see this bull crap every day. All, all that I see, all that I see amongst ourselves, flex, partying, show off. I'm better than you. I got this than you. I'm better than you. I've done this than you. I'm better than you. I'm better than you. Whilst we are busy doing that, self-sabotaging, oppressing ourselves, they are taking over Africa. They are buying our lands. They are moving rapidly. They are moving rapidly. They are moving rapidly. They are taking over. Ken Morris, thank you. Are there wealthy what, black neighborhoods? I don't even know. There isn't exactly any wealthy, you know, black neighborhoods, man. Black people, you find us somewhere. Like, you find us like in Kent, in some areas that are regarded as, you know, better, highbrow areas and stuff like that, where we don't own it. We don't, we don't own it. Yeah, Daisy, come into my inbox, Food Channel 1960 at Gmail. Come with ideas, man. I will, I will, uh, Q, QB, I will see to setting up a stream yard so I can get you guys to, to come in and let's talk, man. Let's, let's, let's talk. I've, I've read the article to you tonight. You know, I've been on here for like an hour now, man. You, it's, you have one of two alternatives. Alternative number one, do nothing. Who is this guy that's just talking and ranting? I don't care. I'm all right. My bank savings, my investments are all right. Me and my family are good. You can go back and go to your bed and go and sleep. Go make sweet love to your husband or your wife and enjoy the rest of your life as a black person. That's great. Or you can be triggered as I am. In your own little way, you can do something. Amalgamate. Let's start building. Stop individualizing yourselves, black folks. Let's win together. That way we can spread. Even here in the UK, in the US, when you have a closely knit community, you can, you can bring about changes in laws and legislations. Speaking facts, Freetown. Thank you. Thank you. Speaking facts, we'd rather build Europe, USA, and Canada, and then build... Yeah. Now, I'm just saying, I'm not against the NHS here in the UK, National Health Services, right, here in the UK. But this is logical reasoning, though. Watch this. Not too long ago, there was a lot of... Foreigners this, foreigners that. Foreigners this, foreigners that. Most of the people upholding the NHS today with the global pandemic, foreigners. Every 8 o'clock on Thursdays or something, weekly, everybody's... <laughs> but the truth is, once this phase goes by, my email address... Uh, Oh my God, black people, man. Food Channel 1960 at gmail.com. Look in the description of the video, right? People, people are clapping every day. Again, my props to the people that are hardworking, that are genuinely contributing positively, you know, to the business processes of... Um, to the you know, runnings of front and back end of the NHS. But I'm talking from the angle of us foreigners, right? One minute, they are pissing down on us. The next minute, oh, thank you so much. Oh, you are phenomenal. You are absolutely marvelous. Oh, you are doing a selfless job. The moment these phase passes, go back to where you came from. Right now, the US is pretty much, they're begging people, the Canada, all of them are begging foreign 
doctors and nurses to come over to come and deal with the pressure within the healthcare systems. As soon as the dust settles, get out. So, shouldn't we build Africa? Doesn't have to be an illusion. My grandparents done did in the UK in the 50s. Oh, man. Dr. Arikana Chimbori is doing, uh, get in touch, they said. She will be coming to the UK. The nurses and doctors that saved Boris Johnson's life were foreigners. Of course. Of course. They, of course they. Of course they are. The NHS. The NHS, the pillars of the NHS are sustained by foreign doctors, nurses, carers, consultants. The list goes on. Nigerians, Ghanaians, Zimbabweans. But the truth is, we are never appreciated. We never will be. This is, this is why I keep saying we're in a system whereby we're being tolerated. It doesn't matter how educated you are, how meekly spoken you are, how nice you are, however much you raise for charity, you're still being tolerated. <laughs> Franklin, why don't you make YouTube your full-time job? You're getting content from me, my brother. Hi, Franklin. Chit chat, chat, chat room. Hi, Franklin. Chat room. How how are you doing? Uh, yes, you're right. We need practice group economics. I'm ready. You know, crab mentality needs to be eradicated. Look, these crab mentality that black people are suffering from. It's a generational PT PTSD that's destroyed a lot of mindsets. And when people raise their children within their homes, unbeknown to them, they further self-sabotage, they destroy their offsprings by embedding the same toxicity in them and the children carry on the batons and they carry on and we carry on the vicious cycle generation after generation blacks we don't help ourselves we don't stand together we don't fight together we don't build together the oppressors know this it's one of their best weapons against us because they know we are divided You tell black folks, I've got a court hearing tomorrow. I'm being hounded by the police. I'm being oppressed by the police. I'm being unfairly targeted by the police. I would love for you to come into the public gallery just to sit and support me. I've got a three-day trial at the Old Bailey of the Crown Court. Black people will be like, uh, yo, uh, the way my shift is uh, set up at work. I'll uh, see what I can do, bro. Uh, you know, stay in there, bro. I got you, bro. I got you, bro. Behind your back, they're talking rubbish. This is what we do all the time, man, black folks. Oh, they come on Facebook. They like your comments. Stay strong, man. Black and proud. They won't show up. You probably find two or three people show up or four people show up. Like, yo, yo, I'm not going there, bro, man. Well, well, yo, I'm not. If if there is an attack on the Asian community, the Pakistani community, the Jewish community, even the Chinese, they come together. Don't get me started on most of our, most of our, uh, let me, let me, let me, let me not say, let me not say. We have a long way to go, man. Yo, give us the like. Uh, CV was not 30,000, though. They said it was 75,000. Black. Uh, that's all I'm saying, man. They're, they are harassing black folks in the USA. You see, what's going on, right, is for like the black folks in China, it's called misrepresentation fraud. They are basically, they are desperately trying to make black people the face of the CV pandemic. Just, this is how, this is how, 
how much they hate, they hate us. It's the same thing they're doing to the African Americans in the States. They're trying to make the black people the face of the CV, the pandemic that they started. The disgust for this skin is unbelievable. And our some of our diplomats then ran discredit fraud against the citizens of their own countries by using their position. It's malfeasance in public office. Using your position to deliberately disseminate misleading information by saying, in fact, oh, Oh, there is nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong to see in China, despite all the blatant evidences. You came into a public forum to say, oh, it's, in fact, it was those people that checked in into the hotel. They asked them to stay quarantined for 14 days. They were the, one, they were the ones that flouted the rules. Wait, what? So, and, and, then, and then you see how that works. When a diplomat abuses their power uses their diplomatic powers to suppress the, the voices and the struggle of the citizens of their country, the country that they claim to represent. What do you think the mainstream media will latch onto? They will latch onto the negative stories because that's how it works. So the vicious cycle continues. These are the same people that are buying the lands and buying our lands and buying, and the, buying our lands. Let me see. People are don't follow you into the courtroom because they're chasing, chasing money. Every other community that support themselves, right? We understand this. Um, I am not the guy that would ask my brother or my sister to 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 throw their job or their check into into the bean just so they can support me. That's a selfish and silly thing to say, right? But if I see a brother in my community who's been persecuted, who has been unlawfully targeted, this is a family unit that's been targeted, and if all you can, everything isn't about money, you know, if all you can do is just show up and lend support. If you go holiday at work and all you can do is take, take off one day to lend support to your brother. That's not too much. Because you destroy one, you destroy two, you destroy all of us. Because you might think it's none of your business today. Two years down the line, do you have an idea what's going to happen to you or your sibling or your mother or your father or your brother or your own child? When you need help, you're then going to turn around and ask people to help you. You never know. You just never know. Oh. Why is money so important to us? It's always about money, man. And we don't even use the money to help ourselves. So even the pregnant women were unruly. Well, what's that? They're trying to find a way to exterminate us. Of course. They, they, see, this is what I said earlier. All the things that we are seeing playing out in 2020, these things have been on the drawing board. These things have been in their war rooms. These things have been pre-planned 10, 20, 25 years ago, 30 years ago. They've been working on this extensive plans, orchestrations. It's not a joke. It's not a joke. Whilst I am busy being tribalistic for the Igbo man in Nigeria, whilst the Igbo man is busy mud slinging at the Yoruba man, whilst the Yoruba man is fighting the Hausa man, whilst I am busy with pointless xenophobia, the foreigners are coming through the back door. They are aggressively taking over our lands and resources. All you are saying are known facts. It's been happening over the years, but all we do is talk, talk. 
This is why I'm clamoring for, I'm advocating for, let's, let's, let's do something, man. Even if you still choose to be in the West, not, not everyone's going to, you know, the UK is not going to capsize tomorrow and then flip on the north side of Nigeria tomorrow morning or flip on the north side of, of Ghana tomorrow morning. Everyone's not just going to, you know, disappear tomorrow morning. It's a gradual process. Some will never go, but let's build together, man. We are the only race of people. We don't do shit together, man. We don't. I want to get mine. You get yours. I actually prefer that I get mine and you don't get as much as I do so that I can flex on you, so that you can crawl up to me and beg me for a spoon of salt so that, you know, I want to show you that my children are better than yours. Oh, so that this, 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 it's... What are you going to do to fix the problem? What am I going to do? It's impossible for me to single-handedly fix the problem. First of all, I need my people to drop the nonsense. That's a start. Let's come together. Unity is basically the kickstart button. Emancipate yourselves. From mental slavery, a bit more tolerance of compassion, respect amongst ourselves, right? What does it matter if I have a degree, my brother hasn't got a degree? Stop that nonsense, man. Let's come together. Respect, love and compassion, the self-destruction, oppression, looking, at, looking down at your brothers and sisters. Let's build together. Let's build trust. Trust is not something you just talk about. You earn trust. You start from somewhere. So if we don't even start, how can I earn your trust? How can you earn my trust? Egotistical nonsense. Put it in the bean. Do you know, do you know what's funny? It doesn't even matter if you're doing a cleaning job, if the other person is sweeping, your resources well used. Right? We join forces. We can buy properties. You start from one. Before you know, you buy two. Before you know, you buy three. Before you know, you buy four. It's doable. I spoke to people from Pakistani communities. And I, I'm, look, hand on my heart, I cannot make this up. These boys are in the late 20s, some of them mid 20s, uh, early 30s. A couple of them work in a meat shop. Some of them own, um, the mobile phone, you know, the phone shops, the fixed mobile phone, the cell phone cases. These are the places that you and I go on a daily basis to buy phone accessories, phone cards, calling cards, and you know those shops, right? These dudes, they make stupid money. They sell fruit and veggies. And I was vibing to them. What do you do? They were telling me about investments. These things are not rocket science. They're not impossible. The power that they are enjoying is unity, brotherhood, sisterhood. The community, the power of community is amazing. Some of them have these things where they donate money on a monthly basis, 500 pounds and stuff. So when you get your own money, maybe you pick 4,000 pounds, they then go and speak to some of their elders. They make sure that you utilize that 4,000 pounds wisely. You don't take the 4,000 pounds and go and splash it on Gucci's and Prada's and Amani's. They want to see you be great. They want to make sure you prosper. So the older ones within their community are their mentors. So if, if I've got five grand, they want to make, they ask me, they sit me down. Okay, what do you want to do with this 5,000 pounds? Okay, why don't you put more into this, get more supply, so that monthly you're making additional 2,000 pounds in income or 3,000 pounds, do this, do that, buy this, buy. this is how they make money. They buy those properties, they do them up, they rent them out. We are busy renting. I am not suggesting that there isn't, you know, black people that own properties in England. That's not what we're talking about. I'm talking about us as a unit. What is it that we own? You live in the UK like me. Tell me. Tell me in the timeline. What is it that you can say, oh, this black community. This is why I talked about it. It's an illusion. It's non-existent.
Bro, most of the stuff in the repair shop are fake, especially those fake Apple earphones. That's a totally different conversation. If you walk into a shop, you're trying to buy Apple earphones and they tell you it's five pounds. I think it's common sense. You already know it. You already know that it's a copy of the original, right? If you want the genuine ones, you can go into the Apple store and go buy it. So they didn't force you to come in, did they? That's a different conversation. People are going to buy it anyway. Before we can respect ourselves, we need to remove the mindset that white or non-black is better. Exactly. It's mental conditioning. You tell your black brother, I am an interior decorator. I am going to paint this house for you for a thousand pounds. I'm talking hypothetically. Oh, where do you think I'm going to find a thousand pounds from? That's too much. Okay, I'll give you a bit of a discount. I'll do it for 900 pounds. They go to a white person with a similarly owned business, right? Oh, excuse me, mate. Uh, my name is Brian Ellis. Um, yes, I'm the director of the company. Uh, yes, of course. I'll use Magnolia. I'll use... Uh, yeah, it's a bloody good texture. I'll make sure. In fact, I'll throw in a free wallpaper for you. Um, it's a, it's a family-owned business. My granddad started these in the 60s. Um, blah, 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 blah. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, to do everything for my workmanship, um, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll charge you £2,000. Ah, my brother. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'll give you... I'll tell you what, if you take the deal today, I'll do it for £1,600. Ah, okay, it's okay, it's all right. I'll take it. Thank you very much. You give him the money. Why? Because he's a white geezer. If it's your black brother or your sister, you get combative, right? You start to complain. Ah, oh, I'll call this Nigerian. It's too much. And the guy might have actually ripped you off. This is what we do all the time. Again, some of us can't even haggle with the white folks because of inferiority complex. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's the, I'll tell you what, that's the final price, okay? Um, I'm going to have to put the phone down. That's the, you know, that's final. Um, if, you, if you're interested, give me a call. Ah, oh, no, no, please, please. And then, and then you see black folks, we, we start saying things, that, oh, sorry, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. When you, when you, pointlessly say sorry to a white person it's an evidence of inferiority complex oh I, I, i'm sorry I'm, I'm so sorry uh, i'm sorry my brother I'm, I'm sorry sorry for what why are you sorry what have you done and oh oh you think they don't know they bloody love it Oh, they can spot you. They can, they can spot you from miles away. They can see the weakness in you. I'm so, I'm, I'm so sorry. Please, I'm so sorry. Forgive me. What? For, 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 forgive? How, why? Oh, well, I don't know. Maybe comments are being censored. I don't, I don't know. It's just like when you get to customs in Africa, they ask you for small, small, but never ask the white man. Yeah. Nigerians in Nigeria do not support businesses and they are owned by... Yeah. It's mental conditioning. A lot of inferior products are dumped by the Chinese into Africa. And I mean inferior products that did not even pass quality checks in their country. Africa is a dumping ground because we take anything, they bribe our people, they let any nonsense in, expired drugs, pretty bad Chinese cheap products, phone cases, a lot of cheap, ridiculous, dangerous products. They dump them. There was a time where there was a, there was a shocking news about fake tomato ketchups that they were not even genuine ketchups. They dare not bring such to the shores of the UK. I'm not saying they're not fake stuffs in the UK. Don't get me wrong. But 
fake tomato ketchups that can pretty much obliterate people. Why? Because we let them in. My partner is, uh, is a builder and he doesn't like working for black people because he says they're the ones who don't want to pay you right and always complain about the price. The ones, yeah, I'm telling you, man, some of you black folks are here watching me. Mentality of wanting something for nothing. A black person, because a black person, a bla I'll give you an example. A black person is your friend, a friend, fine. And then you and I say, hey, dude, let's drive from Manchester to London. I've got my, I've got a car. You haven't got a car. Well, you're my friend. I say, hey, come with me, man. Let's go to London for the weekend. And then you jump in my car. But then, because you're going to follow me to London, and then I'm going to bring you back to Manchester, you've managed to convince your selfish, fish-brained self that you don't have to chip in you don't have to contribute you don't have to buy petrol or diesel you don't have to pay for jack you want to sit down and rest your balls on my seat have me drive or even feed you a selfishness i tell you I, this is this is just an observation right white folks a bunch of friends they jump in a friend's car they're going on a road trip right Everybody chips in. If one of our friends is struggling at the time, and we say, hey, 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 uh, hey, John, come along. Don't worry about it, bro. Don't worry, don't worry. I'll, I'll, I'll pay for you. That's a different thing. That's a gesture of a goodwill, right? John didn't put pressure on you. John's let you know, dude, I'm broke. I can't come on that trip. Don't worry, John, I'll sort you out. That's different, right? But the mentality... It's the same mentality that people take to African parties. That you go to people's parties and you feel entitled that you should take, take away from the party home. Like you haven't got jollof rice, rice to cook jollof rice at home. The same rice that you eat and shit out every day. You go and start wrestling WWE in parties. You want to cart food away. It's the, it's the mentality. Very awkward mentality. It's the same. It's terrible. You see black folks with karate chops. You go to people's function, you're fighting for fried fish and meat. It's disgraceful. And these are the same people, they've got a Jaguar packed outside. A people's function. Like you haven't got food at home. You're gonna eat that thing and you're gonna shit it out. It's, ah. I see this all the time. I see this all the time. They, it's, you know, this sense of entitlement, like, oh, yeah, because, you know, they, 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 they've got, you can't come to a party. They've served you one or two plates of food. You've had drinks, you've danced, you've given presents to the couple. Bye, see you later. Have a nice life. I'll see you later. I'll catch up again. Bye-bye. And just get in your car just go home you must take takeaway why when you see african parties all half of all the women are in the kitchen everybody everybody becomes a food serving expert everybody's fighting for the spoon yeah let me serve the moment no 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 let me serve the jollof rice let me why go and sit your crusty behind down everybody's in the kitchen the kitchen is always everybody's mama is in there and wives they start flexing and give me the plates Get... we're too busy with nonsense man I even know people that go to parties they take offense and stop talking to the person because they were not given takeaway or because they feel that when they serve them at, the, at their table they didn't give them four pieces of meat Oh, they gave my husband, my husband, two pieces of meat. Like, that's your house. It's, look. Uh, <laughs> Holy moly. 
That's what happened at my workplace. They gathered. Let me read that. They can't stop talking to me, man. I don't care. China have us in every country by the balls with long-term deals in every country. Yep, they knew what they were doing whilst everyone slept. But faith the African parties are always a mess. I'm telling you, man. Franklin, it's because we haven't reached the level of self-actualization. It's, it's... I've actually been to an African party where a woman demanded five pieces of meat on a plate of jollof rice. And um, the lady serving the food, who was actually paid to cook for the occasion, said, um, I'm afraid we are giving two pieces per portion of food. If you want more, you can come back to me. I'll make it happen. And the next thing is, do you know who I am? And it became, this woman became a three-headed dragon. <sighs> but the same people, you see that energy? I, 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 I'm not sure if you're following me. That same energy that we put into those nonsense Okay, let's redirect that energy into positive things. Let's go into property business. Let's own shops. Never. They would never do it. They would, they would give you a thousand and one reasons why they would never do it. But you, 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 can, you, you, you hear stuff like, uh, I've worn this dress to church twice. I can't wear it again. Sorry, why? Oh, because, you know, they're going to be looking at me as, as though I, I haven't, you know, I can't, I can't wear it. I've, I've worn it twice. I've worn these earrings twice already. They've, they've, they've seen it on me. I mean, I'm not awake anymore. That's what's set in me, you know. People have seen the earrings on me. Mark Zuckerberg wears bloody T-shirt. These are the people with global powers. Do you see what I'm saying? I, I, I'm i sure you, you can relate to this. Oh, I've won. Like, bro, this is my polo shirt. I don't care about opinions. We are too busy with nonsense. And it's the same people that will tell you they're broke. They ain't got no bread. You're spending money. Your wardrobe is filled to the brim with clothing. And you're saying you can't wear it again. And you haven't got investment. You can't do business with your brothers and sisters. You're worrying about the gilly for next Sunday. The, the, the shirt. The t ah. No, I'm all right. I'm all right, man. The guys that started YouTube is worth 300 million while we argue over BS and then wonder, yeah, man. I'm telling you, nobody's going to come. I, I, I think the long and short of this in, in a nutshell, to end this, right? Been here for, for a bit now. Nobody's going to come build anything for us, man. Nobody. Nobody's going to do anything for us. You're waiting for Messiah, man. You played yourself, B. Which Messiah? Nibu? Where? How? You remember, some of you that watch me, you know I keep saying we are the best assets that we've got. Don't get me wrong. Let me put a disclaimer. I'm not suggesting that... You know, friendship is a thing of choice. I am not suggesting that you have to be everybody's friend. And I'm not suggesting that you have to do business with everybody. Come on, man. That's not what I'm saying. 
But for the ones that can come together and do something, let's help ourselves grow. The job, I don't know, you're watching me, I don't know what you do for a living and stuff, but you know what I'm saying, in your respective communities, especially for those of us that live in the West, we take our money, right? You go to your favorite Chinese takeaway. We give them our 10, 20, 30 pounds, $20, $40, week in, week out, month in, month out. They take your money, they thrive. They put that money into further businesses, into investments. They grow, they strengthen themselves. They protect, they secure the future of their own children, their own relatives. We, the same people that give them that money, we do nothing. The black dollar, the black sterling. What are we doing amongst ourselves? Many years ago, before I was thought off, they destabilized us. That's why they use the divide and conquer template. It's eating into the fabric of our society like an aggressive cancer. It's destroyed us as a group of people, as a unit. It sabotaged us. Self-hatred amongst blacks. Woo! It's on level 1000, man. So look at that. You take, you take, you take self-hatred, right? Self-sabotage, disunity, religiosity, tribalism, xenophobia, Pointless display of ego. Miseducation. Corruption. <laughs> Holy smokes. Ah, oh, man. Honestly, man, it's, <laughs> I took a drink of that water, man. That's a crazy ass illustration. It's, ah, <laughs> uh... oh, boy, <laughs> my bro, man. <laughs> hey, look, I had to drink it for illustration purposes, man. <laughs> 200 thumb ups, you know, I don't know if YouTube is going to try it. You see, you see what they do to my last, let me tell you quickly before I go, man. My last um, two live streams, you know what they do? Because normally, as soon as I end this live stream, right? If I say to you, thank you for talking to you. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye, right? The live stream is meant to just process itself within five minutes. Then it will go live on my channel. You know what YouTube does, right? They'll put a delay on this live stream to go live on my channel. Because after that, you know, once it goes live, it's meant to get further views, right? So then it, it stays in the queue for like overnight, for like 12 hours, until somebody internally then manually approves the video. So what that does is the view momentum would have flattened. Do you see what I'm saying? I, um... Send them an email. I complain about this, and they're telling me it's because of the COVID bollocks. And yeah, it's 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 just it's insane. Oh, it's not something to discuss here. What really? <laughs> we shall overcome. Hey, yo, give me likes, man. I'm not even asking you for money, man. Some of you wonderful people have donated a bit that you have tonight. I know everyone's, everyone's holding on to their prosses now. The uncertainty, the bleak. You're doing your own bit, Franklin. Some youths are waking up. Just hit the like button. Hit that like button. Thank you, my people. 
I cannot talk about 5G in Nigeria, my brother. I don't want them to take down my videos, man. They might take down my channel. I don't even want to talk about it, man. They are going after channels, man. They are going after channels. It's not a joke. Trust me. Bigger YouTubers, people with um, 350,000 subscribers, half a million subscribers, they are tearing down their videos, man. Trust me. <laughs> Who can't donate money, donate likes, and push the channel forward? Thank you, my bro, man. That's me done. I will um, more than likely, please hit the like button, share my video if you want to push me an email. Um, no, no, it's, um, no, I'll be honest, man. It's just, you see, this season of the year, every year, not the COVID nonsense, right? Every year, as soon as we're heading towards summer, I would always have like block nose for a bit. But the past few days, I'll be honest, I've been having drinks with ice cubes and it, it just worsens it in the evening and stuff like that. So, But I'll be all right, man. I'm all right. I, um, I'll be all right. I have, um, for those of you that knows this, I've got this. What's that? Let him sip. I just got that. I'll be alright. I'm okay. Well, thank you for looking out. I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you. Look, if I've sounded a bit harsh, if I sounded a bit, you know, I'm just a passionate dude. I've got love and respect for, for everybody. The only people that are not allowed here are the trolls, man. Um, you know, the trolls will block him out. You know, it's all love for my people, man. It's, I'm just a regular dude. I'm a pile of bones covered in flesh. I never project myself as an epitome of knowledge. I make mistakes. It's a confirmation that I'm human, okay? Um, yeah, if I welcome, you know, logical conversations, I welcome you to disagree you know, with some of my submissions. I enjoy when people push me emails. I just don't like personal attacks, name calling. I hope you get the gist, right? Ah, you should run for president of Nigeria, man. If I was able to, they wouldn't let me. They wouldn't let me. They'll probably have me obliterated, man, because I will remain incorruptible. And to do that in, in that country, woo! It's it's a whole nother ball game, man. Don't forget, it's controlled by external forces. So they've got to put you there because you're a puppet. You have to be on the strings to be controlled as a puppet. So if you don't want to be controlled, they will block you out. Melissa Six, Jane, everybody watching, thank you for your love. Thank you for, for everything. Share my content if you can. You know, if you watch my last, my last, definitely, definitely catch you in the next one. Peace and love. Pow. I'm out. Have a nice weekend. I'll catch you tomorrow, right? Thank you. Bye-bye now.